Uh, my number two, which I'm worried is on your worst, but I love it. It's a miserable life. Oh, God. Oh, beefy boy, God. Hear our prayer. Won't you accept this sacrifice and grant us fewer hours this weekend? I will sample your sacrifice. Um, no, it's not on my worst list. Let me just check. Uh, uh, where do I have that? Is it a mid? I thought you would hate this episode. Uh, number nine. So, okay. yeah, it's okay. mid. Okay. No, yeah. number nine. That's actually pretty high. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's that's not bad. top half, but it's not yeah, in that's my not bad. top or bottom five. Um, yeah. I, I, I really like this episode. Yeah, it was fine. It's got a lot of good things to it. Yeah, fuck, you're fine. Yeah. It's better than fine, damn it. Uh, okay, so the A plot. Um... So remember we said we were going to talk about Beefy Burger. Yeah. This is this is like episode two. Two. This is actually, yeah. yeah. This is the introduction of Beefy Boy Burgers, like Beefy Boy Productions. This is where the name comes from. So Beefy Boy Burgers is a family-run burger joint uh, that's been in the family for seemingly like a few generations or something like that. Uh, Brian is our main protagonist, and he is a young man working at said burger joint owned by his father, his overbearing father. Brian um, wants to move on with his life and enter, basically enter college. So it's like, see, the implication is that, like he's been working at this burger joint since, you know, he was able to like all through high school and he's like, I want to move on. Uh, but his overbearing pressure or his overbearing father pressures him to reconsider college and join the family business running the burger joint. That's... You know what? That's not as stupid as it sounds. That's actually a believable setup. A lot of parents guilt their children into get buying into the family business and like, hey, it was good enough for me. It it put you through, you know, it it, right. it, fed, it fed and clothed you for years. It's good enough for you too, you know. Don't just turn your nose up because it, it sounds like, you know, we're, it's just a burger joint. Yeah. It's like, hey, there's money you made. I see that. His father definitely takes it too far and is very overbearing, but I, I like that's a very relatable setup. It's a very relatable situation that he's in. Um, so Brian is stressed because he doesn't want to, he simultaneously doesn't want to disappoint his father, but he wants to move on with his life. And he confides in his girlfriend, played by, do you want to say it? Laura Park Lincoln. That's right. Yes. From? Uh, m one of my personal favorites, uh, Friday 13th Part 7. Uh, Tina, the psychic girl that's right. from uh, Friday Part 7. That's yep. right. That's actually why I thought this would be one of your top picks, just because of her. Um, mm -hmm. A fun guest character. Yep. Fun guest character. Uh, so that's his girlfriend in the A plot. Uh, in the B plot, she's actually the main character. We'll get there. And Brian, uh, one night while working, uh, his his father's like, oh, I need you to work the graveyard shift, which is hilarious. It's like, what burger joint would be up all night? What, what, oh, what burger joint shouldn't? Be open all night. Right, all night. Not open <laughs> till like midnight or right. 1 a.m. All night. They should all be open all the time. Yeah, so he has to work yeah. the graveyard shift. And what happens is like Brian just being bored at work. And then out of nowhere, this weirdo on a motorcycle shows up. And he's seemingly shot by the man. Mm -hmm. He like pulls up to the window and like pulls a gun and shoots at Brian. And what follows is a series of dream sequences that hint at Brian's fate, but you're not 100% sure. You, the, whole ep, the whole A plot is basically, after that initial five minutes, it's like 15 minutes of a fever dream of like all these weird things happening. And they keep, having, they keep putting in like these subtle little clues. Like Brian will be like standing there like in the dream thing, right? And all of a sudden his no, like he'll start bleeding. And then like, he, st he starts hearing, like, the motorcycle sound, like, in the dream. And they keep, like, a flashing back and alluding to what his fate, like, what might have happened. Like, was that... And the question is, which was real? Was the motorcycle bit the dream? Or is what he's dreaming the dream? And they, 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 they play it along, I think, pretty well. I think they do a pretty good job of playing it off. Uh, I, it's also... Uh, so now I'm getting my, like, pros and cons. Um, it's a fun title. It's a miserable life. Yeah. I, I like that. It's it's I, 
every time, like when I would, like, because you know, you try to remember the names of episodes, you'd fucking forget. Right. You know, a lot of them are just kind of whatever. I like that one. It's a miserable life. Do you remember? Obviously, take on it's a wonderful life. Right. Yeah, it's fine. It's a cute, fun yeah. little title. Uh, we've got not one but two Friday Thirteenth alums. Did you catch the second one? Probably I, not. It's not like a main character in Friday the 13th. No. Okay, so in the second part, there's a nurse character played by Nancy McLaughlin. She okay. is a character in part six. Oh, um, okay. She's the, uh, you know when there's like the two people driving like the car and they run into Jason? Oh, and he, like, yes. Sta- that's that American girl. American Express? Yeah. Yeah. That's that girl. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So she uh, she plays the like a um, a psycho nurse in the second part. The second one. Yeah. So you yep. actually have two Friday Thirteenth alums in the B plot. The B plot. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I really like the uh, setup for this episode. I think like the setting, the the setting of a single character w- isolated working alone the graveyard shift at a fast food joint is a really fun setting. I like that premise. Now, we talk about Freddy's Nightmares where it's like, it has great ideas sometimes, but it just doesn't have the budget to pull them off. This could totally work given money. Like, this could have been awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, even yeah. as like an indie film, like I'm, I love single location films. This could have worked really well. The idea of like, you're at a fast food joint, you're alone, it's at nighttime, you get like any kind of weird care. You're kind of exposed, but like you're, you're inside a building, but you're not really safe because it's a public building. You're kind of open to the elements. Yep. Yep. I, I used to work at a, uh, all night video store. Th- yes. Um, Here we go. Yes. So I, and one of the things about this episode that did hit me is when the person before you leaves for the night and you know, you're by yourself. Right. So he, he always kind of starts his shift taking over or he's working with somebody, but then the other guy like goes home and he realizes like, okay, that's it. You know, from now until, I don't know, tomorrow morning or whenever he actually finishes his shift, he's all by himself. And that is a, that's a good environment to host a story like this where you're on, like you said, you're on your own, you're isolated, whatever happens, it's on you to deal with and no one is coming to save you. That's right. right. So and, yeah. I, and I, I also like, like the idea that like, He's got like this voice box, but it's like outside. Right. You can't see who it is. You before can't they, see. Yep. Yeah, right. You can't. Yep. You can hear them. They'll talk in the voice yep. box, but you can't see them until they pull up to the window. Yep. There's also some like fun shots of like he's just bored, so he starts yep. like playing with the things. And I actually appreciate there was a there's a scene where like seemingly uh, it's his friends, um, Brian's friends, pull up, and it's like it's 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 so like on the nose, but it's like you know um, this like jock looking guy and like he's got a couple babes and they're like in a um jeep with like no top and it's like hey Br- hey brian ditch work come on have fun and he's like ah, i can't man my dad will kill it's me my dad's place yeah and you know what i actually appreciate the fact that he they they pull up to the window and he's like doing something stupid they don't they laugh but they don't actually just like bully him no i actually mm-hmm. like that they don't bully him in that scene it's basically just like all right man like we'll let you go it's like, oh, okay. They don't try so to peer pressure him into actually. Right. But it was, so it was yeah. like, oh, that actually, like, maybe those were actually his friends. Yep. It's like, okay, that's yeah. cool. Like that, again, this, this would have been a really cool setup for a movie. Yep. You know, really could have, they had some actual money. Um, I think the concept of, so like one of the things that sucks about this show is, is it a dream? Is it not? When is it? When isn't it? For this one, it actually kind of works because the idea is his fate is unknown. You don't yeah. actually know. Like, did he just fall asleep when he was yeah. on his graveyard shift? And like, he's playing this out. Was there even a guy on the bike? Like, yeah. I think it works for this one. So I, I'm going to counter that. Okay. And say, I totally understand what you're saying. The, one, of the, one of the problems that I have with this particular episode, and I think if it had appeared later in the season, I would have given it a, a higher score. I didn't give it a bad score. The problem is it's the second episode. And if you know about the first episode, this is essentially the first episode. Yeah. Right? So you don't know anything about the series. You don't really know the formula yet. Right. So all I know is Nightmare on Elm Street, if they're dreaming, it's happening. I don't yet know that, okay, Freddy's Nightmares, 
it's a crapshoot. You roll the dice. Maybe it's happening. Maybe it's not. I right. started to accept that more in the later episodes. But when I've watched this one, because I watched them in order, I didn't get that. So when he gets shot in the dream, I'm like, oh, that sucks. Only to find out, oh, it didn't happen. Like, so the, I, I wasn't prepared for the, um, pulling the rug out from underneath you style that this show was going to repeat over and over. Right. I think if you, if you watch it later, once you realize that that's absolutely possible with these episodes, I would have appreciated it a little bit more, but having watched it right away and then only to find out that, oh, things can happen in your dreams that don't happen. Um, I was disappointed in that. This show doesn't use the Nightmare yeah. on Elm Street formula. Right. It's not interested yeah. in it. It's its own thing. And the you, other thing too yeah, is... Once you, let, once you know that, you're yeah. like, okay, so every episode's just whatever. So if you're starting to watch this, understand know that. that right? Know that, yeah. Just because you see it... Doesn't mean it's actually doesn't happening. Doesn't mean it's happening, Just because right? somebody gets stabbed doesn't mean they're going to wake up with a stab. Right. There's no... Except for when they do. Right, except for when they decide to absolutely do... What Nightmare on Elm Street is built on, right? So again, um, Freddy's I, nightmares, buddy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, the other thing too that I found that this episode suffered from is again because it's so early in the series. One of the things that I unfortunately did was when you start watching something, you don't have a choice but you start to compare it to other things that you've seen that are similar, right? So I started thinking about, okay, so this is kind of a anthology series in the same vein as like Tales from the Crypt or Tales from the Dark Side or um, Night Gallery. Yeah. Any of those kinds of, you know, short, you know, either movies that have, you know, creep show, that kind of thing. You can't do that with this show because it always comes dead last. And it took me a few episodes before I realized, hey, stop comparing this to other similar um, shows I and think movies. You could, I think you could compare it to similar low budget anthology shows because there's some bad ones out there yeah. that have some neat ideas but, but it's, no it's money no tales from the crypt no it, like it's, it's yeah. nowhere near the a tiers but i'm right. saying there's like some C, yeah. like a show like monsters for example you ever heard yeah. of that one that was, yeah no yeah. yeah it's a very meh show yeah. it's about that quality yeah. i would say it's about that level so I, I feel like if i had watched this one later on in the season it probably would have scored higher but because it's literally... It's not far off your top yeah. five, though. Nine yeah, is not nine. far off. Yeah. yeah, it's not far off. Well, back to uh, my positives. Um, Brian's dream sequences are fun in this. Hey, Brian, you don't mind about me and Karen, seeing as how you're going to be here forever. <laughs> Besides, I never really liked the meat in this place anyway. <laughs> Yeah, you know where I'm going with this. Once you realize that they're just dreams, and so you can, yeah. his uh, so he he keeps dreaming. His parents, they're so over the top in yeah. this, and his basically it's like his recurring dream is he keeps waking up in his bedroom, and then he'll like, go into the kitchen, and then his parents are just like acting fucking weird, and they're just like messing with him. And there's some great little moments in it, um, including one of the most iconic moments probably in the entire series. No joke, they introduce the the earworm that is the little uh um slogan slash uh theme for uh beefy boy burgers it's time for the beefy boy jingle chew me eat me you can't beat me 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 and, and to the uh fine creators of this blu-ray disc who have inserted that as the sort of the main menu overlay. It keeps playing over and over. Um, every time you go to turn it on, you're going to hear it. Yeah. Oh, oh God, you're going to get sick of it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I Good job, though. Good job. But, oh, man, it, it hurts. I, I like it. It's yeah. a fun little moment. And actually, uh, that's actually one of my, th that's my favorite moment in this episode is, so the whole thing is like, in the dream, his parents keep being like, Brian, you need to come work for the family business. It's like, you you can't escape it. This yep. is your destiny. And 
Um, and, and, and like, he's like, no, I'm going to go to college moment. And they're like, not even listening to him. They're just like singing the theme of the, like, it's just so cartoony. They're like singing the, the the little, um, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Jingle, jingle, the little jingle for the burger joint. And then he's like, no. And then it cuts back to him and he has now turned into the beefy boy burger logo. <laughs> That's a great shot. <laughs> ridiculous, but ridiculously awesome. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where like his hair yeah. is like slicked yeah. up and he's like, <laughs> That's a fun yeah. shot. Yeah, I like that. Uh and then let's go to the B plot. Yeah. Yeah. To the credit of the episode, we get a concrete epi- a- or we got a concrete answer. In a Freddy's Nightmare episode, very rarely do they give you the concrete answer of what happened. It's very ambiguous where it's just like, oh, no, or maybe not. Yeah. No, so, I like this ending. Yeah, it is important to, to note uh, uh, Brian and uh, Karen, they do get shot. Yes. So yeah. so yeah. we have all this dream shit yeah. and then it hard cuts and it's not dreamy at all. It's right. like a still shot. You see a guy on a bike. Fucking point blank shoot yep. and kill. Uh, sorry, shoots Brian. Yep. We don't know if he dies, yep. and then shoots his girlfriend Karen because she was coming she, up she, to visit him. Yep. Yeah, for and it doesn't really it doesn't really tell us why. No, it's just some maniac. Yeah, which yeah. I uh, okay like Whatever. why why though? Like, it's because uh, decades of very loose gun laws in the <laughs> states have allowed yes. maniacs to purchase right. firearms and and drive up to drive through windows but they didn't no they didn't reason. have time in a 40 minute episode no. to give you all that backstory yeah. but and again another reason why the a story was a little bit meh i'm like <laughs> why why did this happen but okay fair enough yeah b, b story they're both shot <laughs> they're both shot yep. uh and uh Karen, so now we got um what's her name again? It's Lar I mean, Lar Park Lincoln. Lar Park Lincoln. Um who was really good in this? Yeah, I thought she was good. Yeah. You know, we said most of the actors kind of ham it up. Some of them kind of sucks, you know. She's actually acting. She took it seriously. This. Yeah, she took yep. she took it seriously. Yep. That's the way to say. It. She takes this seriously. Um I I I got a lot of vo- like Tina vibes from uh Friday 7. Like just in some of the shots where like She's being manipulated by the doctor. It right. reminds me of how she's being manipulated by her own personal doctor. It's very mm-hmm. similar kind of feel to it, but she's really good in this. Uh, her plot is ba- it's r- immediately right after she's rushed to the hospital, goes into emergency surgery, and she is now in recovery in I, I guess the emergency wing or what would it be intensive care, like the intensive care unit um, yep. of the hospital. And what proceeds is uh, she's basically just having a series of nightmares in the hospital. Uh, in general, right. like they're not really specific about anything, but I guess you could say the theme is her anxiety about hospitals, which is a great setting in general. You know, we talked about this in Halloween too. Yep. Hall- or, um hospitals c- are creepy by nature yep. because you don't know if you're getting out they're, when you're getting they're out. They're foreign. They're um, vague on it. Like often it's very frustrating where you're just like, I just want concrete answers, but no one really gives you a straight answer. You're never in there for a good reason. And, yeah. yeah. Um, it's definitely weaker than the A plot in my opinion. Um, but I agree. What it has going for it. So the whole thing is like, she doesn't know she just sees fucked up things happening in the hospital and she doesn't know what happened to Brian, which I like. That's a nice mm-hmm. touch. So she has a lot of anxiety about like what, I, like the fate of her boyfriend. She doesn't know. She keeps dreaming that like the hospital s- staff are just being like weird and cruel to her. And like they do fucked up shit. And she's like, what is this? I don't understand. And that's really the whole thing. Yeah. It's like 18 minutes. It's like two minutes of initial and then 18 minutes of her just having like, a series of, and they do the fake wake up like five times yeah. in this where it's like, oh, she woke up and now she's in the hospital bed. And it's like, oh, no, no, that nightmare is still going on, yeah. right? But what you do get, though, is you get some really cool visuals. The set is is pretty good. Yeah. I feel like that's where they put their money. Yes. Yeah. And they pu- they pulled it off. You get yeah. some really cool visuals. Um, we got a cool shot of her uh, mouth is sewn shut yeah. at one point. That was a cool little visual. Yeah. I liked that. Uh, the... A neat little thing, that, a neat little visual thing. The biker that shot her and her boyfriend, he plays an orderly in the hospital. Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah. Yeah. One of the orderlies is the yeah. biker and they keep showing him and he like looks in it and he's like, mm. like, yeah, yeah. That's a nice little touch. Um, a lot of the, the way they shoot some of the, her nightmare sequences in the hallways, 
it's shot and filmed. The cinematography is very much like a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Right. Like some yeah. of these shots, you very much feel like, oh, this could have been in a Nightmare on Elm Street film. Like they definitely could have done this, you know. They, they could have had some hospital nightmare sequences, mm -hmm. you know. I, I feel like uh, this was a good sort of concept um, demonstration, but it didn't really have much meat to it. Like they wanted to showcase, hey, here's what we can do if you, if you wanted to give us money to make a movie. But it's 22 minutes of kind of showcasing cool yeah, things, yeah. but it's not really telling a story. And I think that's where it kind of let let me down. It's just a series of nightmare sequences. Right. That's literally right. what it is. It's almost like a demo reel. Yeah, exactly. But, but it's good. It's, it's good. All right. Yeah, it's um, fine. Brian makes a return. Yep. I like yep. his his scene. Um, he shows up, but he's got like a bullet hole through his head. Yeah. And he's like, am I alive or am I dead, Karen? Yeah. Like, I, I, I like that. That was a cool, like, because, yep. I mean, she doesn't know what happened to him. Uh, the ending sucks, though. So the ending is just like, she just, actually wakes up but she's like crazy yeah and then the there's some the, the doctor's just like oh she can't get over it or some shit i don't know it's a, it's a fizzle out ending it's it's what they do when they don't have a good way to actually end it they just oh let's, fizzle it uh, out make her crazy F fizzle mm -hmm. it out yeah. yeah it's a fizzle out ending yep. yeah 